Why does every scout seem to act the same? And when they don't, we all seem to know it. What is this bar that seems to exist, but no one really knows what it is? We're going to talk about that today. Welcome to Scouting on Purpose, the only podcast for leaders looking to grow and improve their unit. I'm your host, Mark Cherry, and I am passionate about the scouting program. And in my 10 years, I have learned a few tips and strategies that when used will improve your unit because a quality program is no accident. Today's camp gear honestly should have been one of the first ones that I did. And that is the tent. The tent seems simple enough for those of you who use a tent. For me, it's 50-50. Sometimes I'm in a hammock. Okay, most of the time I'm in a hammock, but sometimes I'm in a tent. The tent is your home away from home. Now, there are some categories that I think are absolutely essential when it comes to your tent. First and foremost being, I like to have straighter sides so that while I'm inside of it, I don't feel like it's trying to close in on me. Having straighter sides and a rather tall inside means I can stand up and be comfortable when I change clothes. I also like to have windows opposing each other so that when it's warmer outside, I can unzip that and get a cross breeze going through there. But one of the most important aspects when it comes to a tent is the size. For most of us, we're tenting alone. So a two to three man tent works fine. But I recommend that we go with a four man tent. A four man tent allows us a lot of elbow room for items like our cot. Maybe we bring a foot locker when we go camping. But for the most part, it allows us just to have that extra room to be comfortable in it. And depending on how long you're going to be out, it could just be your home away from home. So go out and spend a little extra time selecting your tent. Today, we're going to be talking about character development. It is one of the aims of scouting. Character development is quite simply the process or the learning of common attitudes or traits. One of the outcomes of Scout BSA is that we have productive members of society. Youth that not only do they know how our government works, but they want to become a productive member of that government. The outcome of Scouts BSA is that every youth becomes a productive member of society They become, they're a team player and they know how to take initiative. They've been in an environment where if they don't take initiative, not only will food not get cooked, but their project won't get done. And for a lot of scouts, that could be eagle or not eagle. Character development is all over the scout oath and the scout law. I mean, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country. A scout is trustworthy, helpful, friendly, kind, obedient. The list goes on. I mean, we all should know our oath and law by now. This character development is integrated in both the scout oath and the scout law at such a level that it is defining characteristics of what a scout should be. In our patrols, the scouts work in small, close-knit communities to produce an outcome. It could be the mills. It could be a game. Sometimes just putting our tent up is what they're going to be producing. As a patrol, the scouts learn citizenship, just in a much smaller environment. Scouts BSA is primarily an outdoor program. 
And their character development comes from that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the creator. Being in the outdoors, being away from the luxuries of the city, the scouts have to learn to get along. They have to learn how to make do with things. They also have to learn to think ahead and plan about what they're going to need to bring with them. This plays a role in character development. Character development is all throughout our scout advancement. Just look at the first four ranks. That is scout, tenderfoot, second class, and first class. Scouts have to break down the scout law four pieces at a time. And in my troop, I have the scouts give me four different ones each month. And then once the scout reaches the star life in an eagle, well, now they no longer have to deal with just four pieces at a time. Now we're asking them how they live it as a whole, have the scout oath and the scout law. The uniform also plays a key role in character development. Understanding that the scout belongs to a bigger organization. It's not just our unit that is a part of this. It is scouting as a whole. It's worldwide. All across America, scouts wear the exact same uniform. You may use the red instead of green. But for the most part, every scout uniform looks identical. So they learn that they are a one of many. That they all have to share and pull the same weight. Leadership also carries a big role in character development. There's no secret that scouts creates the leaders of tomorrow. And what better way to practice their leadership than in a sterile environment like Scouts BSA. In the, the troop, the scouts are the leaders in such a way that the adults are not going to let them do something completely wrong. They may fail, wouldn't be at such a level that if someone was at a Fortune 500 company and they didn't develop leadership skills, the company could suffer. So in the troop level, it's a sterile environment, a great place to nurture leadership skills. And the one that us adults really need to pay attention to is the character development comes from us. Scouts learn by watching us. Scouts learn how we should act by watching the adults and the way they act. So you could say a very important role is that we hold the standard of the scout oath and the scout law. Now that can be a very hard task for some of us. I know I ask myself every day, is this something a scout would do? If, this, if a scout did this in my troop, how would I react? Bottom line, character development is that standard of behavior that we have come to expect from scouts. And because of that, it is that unseen bar, the social standard that has come to be known from scout BSA leaders. And quite honestly, I think we need more of it. I still firmly believe that every youth in America should go through this program. So that leads us into our section, the dad jokes. Where do polar bears keep their money? In snowbanks. <laughs> How do you make an egg roll? You push it.
So, guys, here comes the part of the episode where I ask, no, I beg, for you to leave comments in the comment section. That is how all of these major providers know that you, the fans, like what you hear. If they don't see comments, then they don't know to recommend the show to someone else. And who knows? Maybe someone will listen to this and say, I want my kid to be in that. So if you're telling your friends, have your friends tell their friends. And on Facebook, share the post. Don't just like the post. Share it because then it makes someone else on your friends list see that post. But we are making some progress and thank you so much for getting the word out. Instead of today's deep thought, I wanted to give you a Scoutmaster Minute. This one was a new one on me, but I like it so much that I want to share it with all of you Scoutmasters out there and all you future Scoutmasters. So write it down, memorize it, however you do things. Thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle. And the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. And that is my Scoutmaster Minute. And all across America, I heard 58, 59, 60. Guys, as always, until next week, go out, have fun, and don't forget to scout on purpose.